So would you do it? What if, here's the what if for the day, what if the condition of flying into space meant that you could never return to Earth? Apparently 200,000 of you would be just fine with that. That's how many people applied to be part of Mars One. This is the one way, I'm talking no return trip here, to go colonize the red planet. Round one applicants were announced. It's over 1,000 in the running. And joining me is my next guest, Heidi Beamer, credentials amazing, first lieutenant and chemical officer stationed at Fort Campbell in Kentucky, chemistry and astronomy graduate of uh, Virginia Military Institute, selected for NASA's space exploration internship. Heidi, I need to take a breath after giving your whole resume. Welcome, nice to have you on. Thank you, Brooke, nice um, to have you. So, this is, this is like a, you're leaving for Mars, never coming back, never seeing those you love. I mean, I know this has been a dream of yours since the third grade. You even spent two weeks with NASA in the Utah desert living and working in spacesuits. But come on, I mean, is there a teeny tiny piece of you that's a little afraid? I mean, once, once you have an opportunity to live your dream, all that fear goes away. I mean, this is something I've been working for my entire life and given that opportunity to actually accomplish it, I'm nothing but excited to move forward in the process. And the application process, rounds of psychological testing, medical testing, all kinds of stuff I'm sure you can't even share with me. I mean, tell me, the obvious question is, why do you want to go? Well, as you mentioned before, when I was eight years old, my dad gave me a newspaper article of the Soyinger rover. And ever since I was a kid, I held on to that newspaper article and I looked at it and I said, we need to send humans here. Why not be me? And so I've spent my entire life just trying to be the best applicant, be the best candidate. And the reason I want to go is to help humanity. I want to be able to leave it all behind and give a future generation something to look forward to. I wasn't born yet when we landed on the moon, mm -hmm. yet looking back, that still has inspired me to, to do great things and push humanity towards the space frontier. So I want to be able to give that to future generations. To help humanity, well, we appreciate that. Um, <laughs> do you know, I know you're not supposed to leave for a couple of years, but do you have any idea what you'll be doing, how you will be living there for the rest of your life? Yeah, so the, the system that they put in place is, um, it's elaborate, uh, um, excuse me. Yeah, it's, they're sending six rockets to the surface of Mars, and those six rockets will have two habitation systems, two life support systems, and uh, two supply systems. Once you connect them all together using robots, we'll then be able to live there on the surface um, uh, in crews of four. And once we're there, we'll be able to do all sorts of things. Science will be our main objective. We'll be going outside of the habitat three times a week, and we'll just be conducting scientific experiments, learning about Mars' past, Mars' future, and ultimately Earth's future um, as part of the solar system. I hear the excitement in your voice. You are, you are young. You have so many years left to live. Uh, how, do you, <laughs> how do you say goodbye to your family? Yeah, so that's a big part um, that's always weighing in the back of my mind. Um, my family is very supportive of everything that I've done. My mother, my father, and my sister, um, they have shown nothing but love and support. I've been telling them for a long time now that I'm going to be astronaut and I'm going to go to Mars. And I think throughout the process, they're like, yeah, okay, good luck with that. But I think once I presented them this project and said, hey, I think my opportunity might actually come, um, they've been nothing but supportive. I think they're very nervous. Um, they don't want to let go, and, and I don't want to let go Can of them. Can you blame them? But no, of course not. I mean, this is a ridiculous um, endeavor that we're going to be a part of, but it, it is practical, and we're to the point now where we have the science to back up um, what we want to do. So Practical, ridiculous, a dream. I hear all these words. Heidi Beamer, to Mars you go. Thanks for stopping by and talking to our us little Earthlings before you head up there. Um, best of luck to you. Let's stay in touch. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yes, thank you, Brooke. Okay, deal. Now to this.